Hey, before we begin, just quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, nor am I qualified to give any sort of medical advice. However, I do know that if you've got something going on where you think you've got a guitar-related injury, you definitely want to go see your doctor and get that checked out before it gets any worse. RSI, repetitive strain injury. And what that is, is a generalized term to describe a variety of conditions such as tendinitis, carpal tunnel, cubital tunnel, uh, and a whole bunch of other types of injuries that musicians are prone to. And it's very common for musicians to get these sorts of injuries. One of the things that we need to look at is how do these injuries occur? What are the symptoms? And what are the possible solutions to avoid or minimize our exposure to various RSI conditions? It is common in these areas of the body, the wrists, the forearms, the elbows, the back and or your neck. Any kind of pain, aching, tenderness, stiffness, throbbing, tingling, numbness, weakness or cramping. So at first the symptoms can be quite mild and easy to ignore. However, without proper treatment and requisite changes to the routine, the pain can become more pronounced and prolonged. Now, I'll just say that I feel like I'm qualified to talk on this subject because I had to undergo one of the most extreme forms of treatment known to correct a problem that I had that I'll go into later in the video. Generally in the beginning, when uh, you're starting to treat an RSI type injury, um, you got to identify what caused it in the first place. And for music musicians, it's likely that you were doing something improperly with your practicing or performing techniques. So a lot of the common issues that we're going to see are going to be posture, having the guitar strung too low, you know, super high action on the guitar strings, things like that. If the case is mild enough, meaning that if your doctor says, Hey, I'm not seeing anything like, that's detrimental long-term, you know, you probably just take an anti-inflammatory such as an ibuprofen or acetaminophen type pain reliever. Uh, but I would definitely lay off whatever you were doing that caused that pain or discomfort to begin with. You know, in the long-term, if it's something that's a chronic condition that is only getting worse, you're noticing it every day, then you'll probably be referred to more of a specialist, somebody like a you know, a hand surgeon or something like that, because then they're gonna do a full diagnosis on you. For all through college in my early 20s, I would practice six to eight hours a day. And my thought process was no pain, no gain. Problem with that though, is I would just work through the pain and think to myself that I'm doing myself a good service here by continuing to practice for this long. But in reality, I didn't know that I was causing some serious long-term issues. So it all started with a numbness and tingling in my fretting hand fingers as I was playing the guitar. And okay, I can deal with that, that's no big deal. But as each day went on, it progressively got worse to where it would start affecting me sooner in my practicing or my playing. Eventually it got so bad that it was waking me up in the middle of the night. Um, I wouldn't be able to fill my fingers or my whole arm would ache. And we tried a couple of cortisone injections to see if that would reduce the inflammation. The diagnosis was that it was carpal tunnel syndrome and the only true fix for it was gonna be surgery. And after speaking with some of my other guitar player friends who knew people that had this surgery done, everybody advised against it saying, look, it could ruin your guitar career. It could literally make you not be able to play the guitar again. So come to find out that carpal tunnel syndrome uh, what that does is the, the carpal tunnel and all your stuff goes through the carpal tunnel. Excuse my lack of medical terminology. But basically, when you have a carpal tunnel syndrome diagnosis, that affects the first three fingers on your hand, your thumb, your index, and your middle finger. However, for me, I was getting the, the numbness and tingling sensations within my ring and pinky as well. And that's called the cubital tunnel that they have to go into. So not only did they have to do the incision and correct the carpal tunnel, they had to do an incision in the elbow to release the cubital tunnel that was constricting as well. So if I'd have known early on to just take breaks, if I practiced hard one day, maybe take it easy the next day, give my hands a chance to recover, much like weightlifters do. Think about like if you were 
weight training and you do upper body one day, you tend to do lower body the next day because that allows your muscles to rebuild after you essentially just tore them apart. So by giving yourself breaks in between your practicing, especially if you're really practicing intensively, you definitely need to lay off or lighten it up the next day or two. Now, all of us have experienced these symptoms at one time or another. So it's important to know that if you start to experience any kind of fatigue, cramping, pain, stiffness, numbness, or tingling, that you should probably relax the practicing some just to make sure you're allowing your body a chance to heal. If it persists, you may need to go ahead and schedule that appointment with your doctor just to kind of get their opinion on it. And if it's that bad, like I said, they're gonna probably refer you to a specialist, a hand surgeon or something like that. All right, so what are some of the common causes um, and possible solutions for eliminating any sort of RSI type injury? So the first thing is that I see is bad posture with guitar players. Now I teach guitar full time and a lot of the students I, I teach, I see a lot of the same posture problems when we're working on something. So I'm repetitively telling them, sit up straight, don't slouch, don't try to play the guitar with your, your forearm on your leg, things like that. So the better the posture, the better the angles are for playing the guitar. You gotta think, humans weren't designed to necessarily play the guitar or the piano or any musical instrument for that matter. So we have to be very careful on how we spend all those hours developing our craft and our skills. Another issue that's really common is when you're a performer and you're standing and playing the guitar. We, we all think about guys like Slash or other guitar players that have the guitar strap strung really low. And while that looks totally cool AF, I mean, that's rock star look right there. It's not good for the angles of your wrist and your arm and everything in relationship to the guitar. So I, I liken everything on the guitar to basic geometry and the the better the angles are for you against the guitar the better you're going to sound and play but also you're going to reduce the chance for causing any sort of injuries to yourself another possible problem could be that you're using extremely heavy gauge strings and i get it heavy gauge strings feel cool or feel good to a lot of guitar players um, and while heavy gauge strings may not be the straw that breaks the camel's back if you've got a variety of other items that are conducive to getting an RSI type injury, then you probably really just wanna be careful using heavy gauge strings. Another common problem is how high is your action? A high string action is definitely going to create more resistance, which means you've gotta use more muscle strength to push the strings down. So by lowering the string sum, you're gonna find less resistance, which means you have to use less muscle strength and the less you have to tighten up your muscles and use them, the less likely you are to incur some sort of RSI injury. If you've got high action, you've got heavy gauge strings, the guitar is strung really low with the strap, and you've got bad posture, in addition to intensive practice day after day after day, you do that for long enough, you are definitely opening the door for a possible RSI. So just be careful about all of those combinations coming together to create the perfect storm. At the end of the day, the guitar should be an enjoyable activity. So always remember to listen to your hands. If they're hurting, cramping, or any other discomfort, you're probably doing something too much, too hard, or you're doing it wrong. So try to listen to them and keep rocking on. Say, so, man, you gotta subscribe, like, comment, It'd be a lot cooler if you did.